All right, here we go, Lunell. Vlad. Welcome back. Again. Welcome back. And this is off your new gig of being one of our newest interviewers for yes. Vlad TV. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, you actually interviewed John Amos. I did. Which became the biggest Vlad TV inter interview from an outside interviewer. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yep. That's great. Yep. Uh, over a million views combined. <laughs> Uh, covered a lot of interesting topics. John is uh, somebody you want to hear from, you know? You really do. We're lucky to still have him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how old is he now? 80. He's 80. Ah, yeah. uh, he looks great for 80. He does. He's he's everything. Oh, yeah. And like the getting into the hole of threatening <laughs> writers <laughs> during good times. I mean, he's and... never denied that, you know? <laughs> he's never denied that he was a bit of a little... A little uh, 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 hard to handle. A handful, as they say, back oh, in the yeah. day. Oh, yeah. And, you know, of course, he did Coming to America 1, and then he followed it up with Coming to America 2, which you're in as well. I am. Can't wait to see it. Is there a release date? December. This December? Oh, it's going to be crazy. Oh, it's going to be madness. Like, you guys have no idea. Um, For people who have been... Wondering, oh, I hope they don't fuck it up, or it's one of my favorite shits, or why did they do this? This isn't a reboot. This is a sequel. Same people, same story, 30 years later. You know, and uh, all the same characters, the guys in the barbershop, the reverend, the original Mike Drop, Randy Watson, the sexual chocolate. Oh, he's in it? Yes. <laughs> sexual chocolate? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's your queen to be. He's in it. Everybody's back. And it is the best script I've read in my career. It links everything from the first one to the second one. Plus, it's got new characters, obviously, myself and some others. The storyline is great. The cameos will fuck you up. The wardrobe is done by Ruth Carter, the first mm -hmm. black woman to win the Oscar for doing wardrobe for Black Panther. She also did wardrobe for us in Dolomite, and she also did Coming to America. Fabrics that you've never seen before from, you know, Egypt and India and colors, and it's just beautifully shot, and I can't wait to hear the music that they add, you know, and stuff like that. That's what they're doing now, so... The premiere is going to be probably sick. Might be some giraffes and lions and shit. Ain't no time. <laughs> well, I guess... Uh the wife of the king, uh, James Earl Jones's wife in the movie, she had passed away. Yes, um, uh, Mad Sinclair. Yeah. Yes, rest in peace, Mad Sinclair. She's the only person who's not back besides um, Soul Glow is not back because, of course, she got married 30 years earlier, so what do we need him for? <laughs> and uh, But actually, I think Eric LaSalle had some other commitments that he was, because he's directing and doing stuff like that now. Yeah, right. I wouldn't care if I was directing fucking <laughs> Gone with the Wind. I'm like, I'm in for coming to America. And um, that thirsty-ass sister, you remember that thirsty uh -huh. sister? Yeah. She's not in, so I don't know. She must be hmm. smoking drugs, because why would you not? Okay, not not really. But why would you not, you know, want to be in this? But maybe yeah. she wasn't. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe she's ill. We don't know. We don't know. Can't wait. December. Yeah. Coming to America too. Yes. The Quest. The Quest. The Quest. The Quest. Yes. Well, you and I both live in L.A. And just recently we had the Kobe Memorial. Very sad. Extremely emotional. Yeah. Extremely touching. Yeah. Extremely well done. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, I give shots out to Vanessa because I would not have made it, especially since we already had the private funeral. But for me to come and have to go through all that and have to bring my children, because I think I saw the kids, right? Not the baby baby, right? Didn't I see the other oldest daughter? And yeah. I don't know, I think. So, and to have them do it again, I just, I would have, I don't know, I probably would have said just do it. You know, you know, every eye is on you and everybody's gawking. I think she made a great, tender, wonderful speech. I think everybody did. My boss, Jimmy Kimmel, sort of moderated the thing. Yeah, and he cried 
Throughout. Uh, throughout, yeah. Well, he didn't even do a show that, that next Monday, I believe, or something. He just did a tribute show. He's, he was very, because I think Kobe did him like eight times. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so they're really close friends. Yes, yes, yes. And so, um, you know, of course, Shaq Diesel, you know, it's good to, it's funny because the relationship with him and Shaq, the relationship with him and Jordan, everybody was like, yeah, he was an asshole, but we love that guy, you know? Because <laughs> Kobe wasn't fucking playing, you know? He, he's legendary for his work ethic. He's legendary for, if you have to stay after and shoot three, a hundred baskets, he'll stay after and shoot three. If you, he, you know, I think uh, Jordan told, or somebody told the story about he was getting ready to do one on one with them, and he was there like all early and sweating already by the time the uh, other person got there. He just, his work ethic was great. And then to make a naysayer out of everybody about his relationship with Vanessa, you know, when nobody wanted him to marry her back in the day, you know, she's 17, she's high school, his parents didn't attend. Everybody was like, fuck you, crazy, you're getting married too early. Oh, but his parents didn't attend the wedding? No. Oh, so that's where the whole beef started, probably. Right. Uh, and I heard mm, the, the teammates neither, but that's just, I don't know hmm. if that can be verified. Maybe somebody did, but, you know, and he didn't give a fuck. And he proved us all wrong, you know, because love is love. And they were madly in love. She was like, you know, they like to say that um, she was his first girlfriend and he was like, yeah, but what about Brandy? Oh, he took Brandy to, to his prom. prom. Yes. So don't discount Brandy. <laughs> Brandy was there first. But, um, you know, they made a beautiful family. She rode with him and he loved her till the end. It's just the most, it's so tragic on so many levels. So many levels. It's so tragic. But I think the memorial was well done. And shout out to Alicia Keys who broke me the fuck down playing that um, midnight uh, sonnet, midnight sonnet that they said he learned. That's, that's crazy to me that Kobe learned how to play the midnight sonnet. Like, that might be folklore. I don't know. <laughs> but it was well done, I thought. Really, really well done. Don't know about charging that money, though. Yeah, then they charge like $125? Two, 20, something. But if they charge five dollars, it's like Nip's funeral didn't charge no money. Michael Jackson's funeral didn't charge Michael's any money. Michael's funeral didn't charge no money. Two hundred, two hundred twenty-four dollars. I was wrong. You were closer. From twenty-five to two hundred twenty-four. I think I had some twenty-five dollar. You know, but I'm like, okay, so let's say they had to pay the employees of the Staples Center. Well, they had to pay them for the other funerals. They didn't ask for no money, and they said all this money is going to go to the Mamba. Foundation, which do Vanessa need to raise money for the Mamba Foundation? Can't you just? Well, let's speak on that for a second. Vanessa is actually suing the helicopter company, which I don't disagree with her doing. The timing of it was a bit weird. You know, the lawsuit was announced on the day of the memorial. So what? She got to take her. She got to. Somebody's got to get it. She got a lot of pent up shit. Vanessa right now can do the fuck she want to do because she has lost her man and her child. If she goes ballistic and starts wilding out, she going to get a pass because this is not It's too much to, you know, I, I don't think I'm that strong. I believe that somebody would have to come bathe me, feed me and take care of the kids. Because I'm out of my mind. You know, everything runs through your mind. Is she still sleeping in the bed that they slept in? Is everything still on the nightstand that he left that day? Mm. Will it ever move? You know, I think about all that kind of stuff. You know, the tears she cried, how you tell the children. It's just so, it's just so tragic in so many, on so many levels. Yeah. Well, the parents were there, Kobe's yes, I parents. Saw them. But, but they didn't speak. No, they weren't asked to, I guess. Because from what I understood, remember uh, people were saying when Vanessa asked me to speak, when Vanessa asked me to speak. So if the parents didn't speak, maybe they weren't asked. Maybe they were asked and they refused. Well, 
the parents really weren't in uh, Kobe and Vanessa's life at all, from right. what I understand. And right. I think at one point they tried to sell some of his uh, memorabilia, yes. mm-hmm. and he had just basically cut them off. Yes. But her family was still very much in the picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, which happens a lot in marriages. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just take a side. The Bible says. <laughs> what does the Bible say? You are to cleave to your mate as one. Your parents become secondary. Uh-huh. So you can't make your parents first no more. Your, your spouse comes first. Facts. You know, that's what the Bible says. Something like that. Yeah. But, um, so that's what he did. He was like, if you don't want to get on this train, especially after they've been married so long, you know, like maybe in the first three years you might want to act the ass, but after that it's like, I guess she ain't going nowhere, so you got grandkids now. Yeah. You should maybe just be like, okay, okay, you know, and we're wrong. And let me get my, my son back in my life. And, you know, but you got to have the right motives too. So I don't know. You know yeah. We don't know them. We don't know them. Families are complicated. Fa- families are complicated. Yeah, my family reunion is in August. Pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael Jordan spoke yeah. at the funeral, which I thought was kind of like the highlight it for was me. Great. For me, because he was a crying mess, wasn't he? He was a crying mess, and you know, it was such a sad moment. And then he just broke that sadness by saying, "And About now I'm going to have to have another crying meme for the next two years." <laughs> so my question is, how long do we wait? How long do we wait before we drop the memes? Because they're coming. Um, I think that that moment proves the power of comedy. Yeah. Because everybody was there feeling so brokenhearted and emotional. And when you say something comedic in a situation like that, I know I've done it at many a funeral, it's like you can feel the collective, oh, <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> Whew, let me just, you know, we needed that release. So that was a great moment. Really great, and it's true. The meme, oh, <laughs> the memes are coming, honey. <laughs> How long are we gonna wait? No, you're to right, wait. and it's not like he just came up and started cracking jokes. He was no, crying himself that was already. Sincere, was he sincere because he knew what he looked like. He didn't even have a tissue. He was a wet mess. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> well, rest in peace, uh, Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Uh, I never got to meet him, uh, but he's going down as one of the all-time greats. I uh, met him once. And Vanessa mm-hmm. on my Instagram. Nice. At Lunell. <laughs> and uh, he was really pleasant, really cool. I talked to Vanessa. I said, well, probably got 12, 15 housekeepers. They're like, no, we ain't, we ain't got no housekeepers. I'm like, you're lying. You got to have somebody to clean up that mansion. <laughs> but maybe at that time they didn't. I don't know. But I know she wasn't cleaning no listen vanessa's not cleaning the toilets in the estate okay no she is definitely no, not so, thanks, <laughs> definitely thanks, not. Cole, but i'm not buying that not one. buying it come on <laughs> but but they were very very pleasant very 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 nice well they actually renamed uh the mvp for the all-star game to the kobe bryant award oh did they yeah well you know that little Gigi. god damn she apparently was beast mode like yeah. she was getting ready to take shit over he didn't need no son he had her. And then when Vanessa said that God knew they couldn't be here without the other one, broke my fucking heart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I live literally down the street from where the crash happened uh, in Calabasas. Uh, we walked down and, uh, you know, walked as far as we could until the police lines blocked it off and, and just kind of stood there. With Did all the you? Other, yeah, on the day of, yeah, just stood there with the other Kobe fans and just kind of. But if you were in L.A., Grammy weekend, yeah, you remember the fog. It came on Friday. I know exactly what happened. No, I mean, literally, I live right there. Like, the fog was dense that day. It was, the, it, was it started on Friday, though. Yeah. Friday night, I was coming home from somewhere, and I was like, damn, it's foggy just going down Pico. Then Saturday was a Grammy party for the artist Her up off Mulholland. I said, there's no way I'm driving my ass up there trying to have cocktails. I got an Uber SUV and I watched him like a hawk. So, you know, one would, one would, the, the lawsuit comes in here. Now one would think that if they grounded the police helicopters, right? Mm-hmm. And the weather helicopters, 
that maybe you shouldn't go up either. And what, from what I've talked to my aviation affiliated friends, they say at the end of the day, it's the pilot's call whether you go up or not. But but the air traffic controller, if, if he said no, then could the pilot override that? Man, the pilot can do whatever he wants. He can get in that. It's not like someone else controls that helicopter. And, and that's his helicopter, so nobody can. Okay, well, so, it's the company's. It's the company's helicopter. Oh, it wasn't Kobe's private helicopter. No, no. I think he may have actually owned it and he sold it to that company. That that part of the story. Because he had his own. He had a helicopter, no, but that was a rented helicopter from a company that he's been using for Ugh. years, and he's had that pilot that's for ten why years. That's why the for the the, the company, company, yeah, because you can't sue yourself. Like, can't if it's sue your own. a dead pilot either. A dead pilot, exactly. And you know, we had an interview with. Uh, we didn't have an, we put up an interview uh, from this pilot who flies these types of helicopters and he just kind of broke it down. You know, he looked through all the flight footage and kind of explained what happened. And even before the, the information was released, he said, yeah, it looked like they were, they were just too low and they didn't realize where the hill was and so forth. But so it wasn't a, ah, it was just no, like. No, it was like, uh, we're just going and then boom, here comes this hill out of nowhere. Oh my God. Uh, but I prefer that if I got to go then. Yeah. My last moments on earth being terror and yeah. me, me and my kid. Yeah. Ooh, it's just it's just all too it's just too it's too much. I mean, he basically just broke down the situation. He said, "What happens a lot of times is that when you have these VIP clients, you just don't want to tell them no." This whole city is built on people who do things for celebrities that they ought not do. Yeah, plastic surgery that they ought not do. Yes, prescription pills that they ought not do. Yeah. Michael Jackson had a doctor living in his house that was prescribing pills to him whenever he wanted to. And like, like the it was milk. A, like and it was a the damn, milk. Yeah, and the milk? Yeah, the propofol. I don't know what that is. That's the liquid that killed Michael. Oh, okay. That's the, the he had an IV. Uh, excuse me, next to the bed. That's something you ought not do. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. This whole city is built on people doing shit for celebrities that they ought not do. Yeah, and, and people... It's a little narcissistic. Yeah, and people uh, people act like idiots around them. Like you. Oh, I know. So, someone who's around a major celebrity like that does not even value their own life. Like, in, probably an example of this pilot. Like, the pilot knows he's supposed to say, "Well, Mr. Bryant, we're going to have to pull over at this random airport, and you're going to have to take a car service to your Period. Game. That's what should happen. That's what should happen. Then he would have been late and all this shit. And now you got Kobe. Yeah, well, I'm never going to use you again. Yeah. Oh no, Kobe's not. Well, not you're my really client. never going to use me again, <laughs> right. and nobody else is either. Yeah. You got to say people are so starstruck. You know, I know Kobe Bryant by any stretch of the imagination, but three weeks ago I got stranded in Charlotte, North Carolina, on my way to Virginia Beach. My security did not fly with me. I flew alone. I was meeting them in Virginia Beach. Then. Right before we get to Charlotte, where we were going to change, I hear the flight attendant say the word tornado. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, <laughs> I hit the bell. Bing. I'm like, excuse me, did I hear you? Did you say, did you say tornado? And uh, so we get to Charlotte. We had to circle. We get to Charlotte. We land. We had to stay there for 12 hours. Now, what happens to Lunell in 12 hours? Minding my business, might have to talk to somebody on the phone. I'm covered up. I got hat. People recognize my voice. I can't. I can't wear a hat for 12 hours. I pull my hat off. It's like a light bulb. For 12 hours, I probably took fucking 70 selfies. <laughs> probably 15. Talk to my mama. It's her birthday. My grandma <laughs> mama love you. This is my child. He just graduated from school. He love you. And my kid want to be a comedian. <laughs> for 12 fucking hours. Do you think? I, people felt so bad for me. White man bought me a bagel. <laughs> no, white man bought me some water. Because I was like, I've opened a kiosk. Like, this is some bullshit. You can't say yes to one person and not say yes to everybody who hears you say yes and it's then the 12 hours, so more flights are getting delayed and delayed, and the crowd just got, I'm traumatized. Matter of fact, don't fuck with me if you see me on the street for about the next two weeks. <laughs> I'm traumatized. You know, the other person that I've seen do this, like we were at a, I think Snoop had a, an, a premiere for his movie, his uh, Jamaican movie, 
Yeah. And I sat there and watched for two hours as he took pictures with every fan that wanted it. Like... You can't say all the VIPs were gone. All the all the celebrities were, you know, in the after party, whatever. He sat there and took pictures. It's a feeding frenzy. You can't say yes to one and not say yes to everybody who heard you say yes to this one. But but I've I've always found that the most successful people are like this. They are very nice. They are very hospitable. I'm not that nice. I'm not. I was just trapped. (laughs) But where was I fucking gonna go? I swear I'm not that nice. Not twelve hours worth of (laughs) nice. Speaking of Snoop, uh, he made some comments about Gail King mm-hmm. and her interview with Lisa Leslie. Now, I'll tell you this, because Gail said, oh, that was taken out of context. It was a longer interview. I do interviews for a living. For the last 15 years, I've been doing this. From my point of view, Gail knew exactly what she was doing. She had that question and she made sure to slip it in somewhere in that interview, knowing exactly the type of effect it would have. But she probably didn't think it was going to be so negative. So then she tried to blame it on the network or, you know, blame it on whoever. But she knew exactly what she was doing when she brought up Kobe's legacy being tarnished by the, the rape allegation that never went to court. I'm going to say a little bit. I'm not going to say a lot. Because if I say what I really want to say, I'll never be on the own network again. (laughs) Oprah Frost fucking shoot me on sight. But there can be no taken out of context if you don't say it. You have to have said it. Yeah. I saw the interview from what I, I, I could see. It was no taken out of context. It was a deliberate question. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe young Gail has gotten herself a little bit of a head up under that lace front. <laughs> and after she did the R. Kelly interview. Yeah, she was feeling herself. Shit, I'm, you know, I I'm got Gail this. King. I'm, I'm Gail fucking King. Really, <laughs> Gail, you are... Oprah's friend. You're a very, you know, accomplished journalist, which means that you know exactly what you're doing. Yes. Okay? And it was too soon. Mm -hmm. It was dismissed. It was bad timing. And I don't care how politically correct people want to try to be in this era. Snoop said with 999 9% Nine percent of the people in the country were feeling right, and that was you, funky doghead bitch. How dare you want to tarnish my homeboy's reputation? Respect the family and back off, bitch. Before, before we, come, we come, get you. Come bitch. get you. Now that for me, <laughs> I said you had to do one day. And he said, I probably shouldn't say this. I right, fuck it. Yeah, he said fuck it. Um, he took it back to Long Beach with that one. You know, so we come snatch your ass up. But I don't think he physically meant we're going to come snatch you up, Gail. No, it was a Snoop, great Snoop threat, ain't, though. No, yeah. I, it, it Snoop ain't me. snatching up nobody. He's I, a I, grandfather. I, I he's established. He does, he's good. Yeah, he he's should good. just concentrate on his son's modeling career right now. Oh, yeah. You saw that, huh? Those pictures of, of Snoop's son. I wasn't going to mention this, but you brought it up. So it is I what just it is. said that he should you know, concentrate on that and not spew, you know. I mean, he said what he said. I, I and mean, he said what we meant. Right. But did, he's did got you, bigger fish to fry right now. You saw those pictures of uh, his son in drag. I, 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 you know, okay, Snoop's my, we got, you know, we're, we got a relationship. Snoop's my friend. I even have a relationship with Cord- Cordell, you know. I his know son. Boy. Um, if it was only modeling then I think it was a bad choice of styling. And I would hope that even in the realm of creativity and freedom of artistic, uh, you know, prowess, whatever, I would hope that unless my son, you know, if you're not gay, take the sign down, you know? (laughs) Uh, 
why do you want to let somebody dress you in such a way to, you know, mess with your masculine uh, persona? Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like this person dressed him in some royal Billy Porter shit. He had on a little blouse that looked like something I wore Easter Sunday in 65. <laughs> he had a nice rose in the middle. He had uh, makeup on. He had a he butterfly had, uh, on his crotch. He had dangling earrings. So, eyeliner. Eyeliner and stuff. So, you know, if he was redoing the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I get it. But I don't think, for my taste, that it was a wise styling choice. Of course, the boy got his life to live, you know. Remember, he didn't want to play football no goddamn way, remember? Well, yeah. Snoop, so, uh, I mean, I I'll tell you this. When, when we first saw this, the overall consensus was he's trying to piss his father off. Him and his father must be going through something right now. There's another way. Break out the window in the road. <laughs> Don't do that to piss off daddy. And I think that actually, I really believe this. I really believe this. Okay, Snoop already went in on Gail. Okay, you know, the, the gay community is very on top of shit and they've gotten very bullish in the last, couple of years to, you know, black folks get kill, called nigga every day somewhere. And we don't have a team of people that will drag people through the mud and be like, shit, I think we've been des desynthesized. But what I believe is that even if Snoop disagreed with the fashion choice, or even if Dwayne Wade disagreed with the fashion choices mm -hmm. of his son, or even if Magic disagreed with the fashion choices, of his son, which you can't really disagree, because if you're gonna be a drag, you know, if you're gonna dress a drag, be a good one. And EJ is a fashion icon. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. But anyway, I think EJ is a fashion icon. He's a fashion icon. Okay. Yeah, that's what uh, all, all the children know. But <laughs> I believe that the fathers, these black fathers, are in such a position that they have to say the right thing just to live, because if you don't the bombardment of the flack that you're going to get by the whole LGBTQ mm -hmm. community, it's not worth the bullshit. Now, when they get alone in their bedroom, in the bathroom, they may go off and be like, I can't believe this is happening to me. But they can't say that publicly because yeah. it's just, and I don't, I don't know if they really believe what they're saying. Well, remember, there was that, uh, that series that kind of focused on Snoop moving his family to Las Vegas. He ended up taking a, a residency in a Las Vegas club as a DJ. Dredge. So so his son could play in this high school in Las Vegas that was considered one of the best football schools in the country. From that, he ended up going to UCLA, right? On yeah. a football scholarship. Yes. And after the first year, his son said, nah, I don't want to play football I don't anymore. Do this. <laughs> Which was like, listen. That man is a grown man. He is 100%. He do want to fucking play football. <laughs> he, he I mean, you can have the choice not to get beat the fuck up, broke the fuck up. <laughs> that boy is a great looking boy. He don't need to have a shoulder. What's these ACLs and shit? Everybody's always fuck up pulling. Yeah. You know, walking around here like me with these badass knees. <laughs> so. so, I mean, I'm sure that that was definitely an issue between Snoop and his son. Uh, you're not going to tell me. A father doesn't go through that extent for that many years for a son to finally go to college at a good football school and say, nah, oh. nah, I'm good. Thanks, this Dad. This doing that all over the country. <laughs> right. The parents put him in college think it's going to be one. I don't fucking want to do this. Nah. But he actually responded to the, the pictures of himself in drag. And he said, said, I was embodying a role. That shit was on masculinity. And I channeled my inner prince. I channeled my inner Rick James. And I don't understand it. Whenever other artists that are not black wear makeup, paint their nails, or put eyeliner on, society doesn't put a label on them. Uh, you know, and he, he basically said he's not going to be following the rules and, you know, the labels. Like Jaden Smith. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I, I can tell you that when I saw those pictures, I did not think Prince. 
<laughs> no, Prince did I somehow say Rick James. Prince somehow pulled it off. And, and so did Rick James. So did Rick James. And I remember I interviewed Morris Day. And, and we talked yeah, about yeah. We, we talked about how Prince was doing that in high school. But Morris Day said, man, Prince is straight as a gate. Well, I guess back then in high school, he had an afro, yeah. <laughs> a turtleneck, <laughs> bell bottoms, and pink girl gloves yeah. with the fingers cut off. Yeah. They, they weren't even, you know, fingers. There was big mittens. <laughs> the big girl mittens. <laughs> <laughs> and he always had this kind of metrosexual vibe to him, even back in high school. Absolutely. Even before I knew what this metrosexual, you know, I, I, you know, come to know that word. But before I knew what that shit was, yeah, he was, he was on that tip. Okay, but you said that he was always straight as a gate. As far as I know, <laughs> you know, as far as I know, you know, he was into the girls. No one really thought Prince was gay. Well, they did it, in the beginning because he was wearing them little panties and shit. Well, he, them, had, he had his butt cheeks out at one point, remember yeah, that? Yeah, but Prince in high heels with lip gloss and eyeliner could pull your bitch. Right. <laughs> and her mom. And her mama. <laughs> okay? And uh, so could Rick James. Yeah. Not the quite same vibe old boy had, but, you know, hey, hey. to each his own. It's not my, my family. It's not my shit. But I just think that it was a little extreme. And yeah. I think the, you know, the, the, the demasculization of black men in this country, this whole internet full of black men dressed in drag trying to get put on because they think they funny. And I just think there's so many other ways to be funny <laughs> than to put on your, your mama's bra pants around fuck the living room. I, you do, I don't even know what these parents know what their kids are doing in the fucking living room across the country. <laughs> well, Snoop ended up a ended up apologizing to Gail. And then he went on Jada Pinkett's show, The Red Table. And uh, that, was a, that was a weird one. Because Jada's like, when you were talking about Gail, I felt like you were talking about me too. Slow your alpha ass down, uh, <laughs> Jada. I wasn't talking about you or all women. I'm super talking about Gail. Over a, spe over a specific, specific comment from yes. Gail. How does Jada somehow insert herself into this the situation? This red table thing is, is really deep, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a great show. I actually, you know, watch it when I can. Yeah. But, you know, it's a little martyrish, you know, even though they all say, you know, I made the same mistakes. And I'm like, Jada's you know, turn into like a guru or some shit. <laughs> Dwayne Wade announced that his 12-year-old son, who was named Zion, will now go by Zaya. And apparently he knew, I guess from like three years old, he claims that he, he knew that his son was going to be transgender and he fully supports it and, and so forth. I'm a very old school chick, you know. Right. I know that, you know, a lot of kids when they're 12, they might want to be a fucking astronaut. <laughs> Think they're born to be an astronaut. They don't end up being an astronaut. 12, and, yeah, 12 is an age where you don't know nothing. Honestly. I, I mean, can't think of one thing at 12 that I still do to this day. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, I'm not going to have no 12-year-old running my motherfucking house, first of all, because the way I feel about this is this. Let's just get through high school. Why do you want to risk... There's people out here who do hate crimes. Mm -hmm. There's people out here who kill kids. And they can kill them at 19 as well as they can kill them at 12. But high school is a very tricky place to be. And it's hard to want to express yourself and not be able to do it, especially during your high school years when you're finding out where you fit in. But I would, you know, no parent wants their kid to be gay. I don't believe it. They don't wash this baby, oil this baby up, change his diapers, teach the one time go, oh my God, I hope little Jamal turns out to be gay. I hope that. I don't believe that. I believe that if that's what happens and that's who your child is, you should accept your child for whatever they feel they are. But at 12 motherfucking years old, I believe that in order to not get your ass beat after school every day, in order to not be bullied and harassed, 
let's just get through high school, not even 21, but at le maybe at 18, if you still feel the same way, then express yourself. But I just don't want to see nobody get bullied and beat up. And high school is fucked up. The little high school motherfuckers is fucked up. And they will say shit to your child that will make you go down there and catch a case. <laughs> yeah. So I just, and plus, like I said, I'm not going to have no 12 year old running my goddamn house. Now, you know, you, uh, we would have talks behind closed doors at home as a fact. Uh, here's the other thing. Everything in your fucking house don't have to play out on Instagram. Yeah. Everything in your house don't have to play out on social media. Some shit in your house to stay in your motherfucking house. That's just the way I was raised. It may not be the right thing to say and do right now. That's the way I was raised. Well, yeah. I remember I was watching LeBron's show, uh, The Shop, and yeah. uh, Pharrell was on there, and he was saying how his generation, which includes you and I, they were more secretive. Whereas if you were just hanging out and someone pulls out a video camera, it's like, yeah, yeah, put that away. Like we don't, we don't want you to tape this. Like this is, this is a private moment. But you'll you'll be hard pressed to go on social media, not celebrities, just regular people, and see any event, any event that involves more than five people, where four of them don't have a camera out and they're recording it as they're doing it. You go to concerts and you'll have a crowd. Every person will have their phone out. That's why Bruno, my baby Bruno, that's why Bruno makes you lock them phones up. Yeah. He said, I rehearse too hard. I work too hard for you to come in here, be four feet from me, and not be looking at me. Put the phones away. Also, I was just at Jet Suite. You know Jet Suite? It's like a private airport for this little private plane thing you can take from Clear Burbank port. to Vegas. <laughs> right. I'm on fucking jet suite and waiting in the lounge. Every motherfucker in there is on their phone. I'm not. I mean, eating something. I said somebody could come in this bitch with a rifle and nobody would even know because nobody's even looking up. Did you know, and this, this really messed me up, that these private jet companies, because these jets are not going 24 hours, right? Right. They're, they're grounded sometimes for extended periods of time. Yes. Because only certain types of people can afford them. So in order to make extra money, these jet companies actually rent out their private jets while they're grounded to so Instagrammers. So they fly. can go in and, and pretend like they're flying private. Oh, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Because I'm going to I'm I'm tell you, like, I'm going to keep it 100. Like, I usually fly first, but I've never flown private. I just feel like I don't need to do that. Well, first of all, Jet Suite is not private. Oh, Jet not? Suite is just a cheaper ticket than it's cheaper than Southwest. They only run certain places, you know, Palm Springs or mm -hmm. Vegas. They only make certain runs, San Francisco, like an hour. They only fly like an hour. And it's just like if you take a plane from Biloxi to Chattanooga. One seat on this side, two seats on this yeah. side. It don't have no couches. It don't have no TVs. And I was really disappointed. I have flown fri private, but only with Cat Williams. With Cat uh -huh. Williams is the first person to put me on a private plane. Yeah, I've never flown private. I, I have. It was, I was scared to death. But then when you get up there and you can smoke your own weed and drink your own shit. Oh, you guys are smoking weed on the... Fuck yes. You, I don't know if you can, but I know what we did. <laughs> okay. And we was up there listening to our music, walked around popping bottles. It was... One of the greatest memories of my life. Uh, I ain't been on a private plane since then. Uh, I'm jealous. But I'm damn sure going to rent one out in Florida. <laughs> Thanks I'm for sure. that. You can give me that info after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Boosie made uh, comments about Boosie. about Dwayne Wade's uh, son slash daughter. Saying, no, don't, don't cut your son's dick off, man. Just don't do it. Did he say he wanted to cut his dick off? I'm not sure. I mean, isn't well, that Boosie kind of a knows. natural progression into that, but though? But Boosie need to worry about his 10 kids. Right. How about that? <laughs> But take care of your 10 kids. Don't cut none of their dicks off. <laughs> but I actually looked into this. Um, there's been a lot of studies done. And what they found is that most kids who think there's tra they're transgender at an early age like that, usually by the time they turn 18, realize they're not. And it's also like getting these types of, like if you actually go forward with the surgeries and so forth, the suicide rates on these is very high. Well, well, what age can you get a surgery at, though? Probably 18. I wouldn't let my daughter get 
breast implants at 18, but at 18 she could probably get them her damn self. See what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I, I don't care when the boy, what the boy do, but I just don't want to see kids get beat up in school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, if you I, still feel the same way right. at 18, God damn it, well, I'll take you shopping on Rodale Drive. Right. But Yeah, but, you know, the type of school that Dwayne probably sends his kids to, which are private schools, they're very, very keen to bullying and so forth. Bullshit. You don't think so? The rich motherfuckers are some of the worst. <laughs> no. No? You must, no, that's okay. bullshit. All right. You won't get no less harassed in <laughs> private school in fucking Sherman Oaks than you will do at Crenshaw High. Okay. I guarantee that's bullshit. Okay. Kids are fucked up no matter what <laughs> the class they're in. Well, Pop Smoke just got killed. And I was on the phone with him a couple days before. We were planning on doing an interview that next week. We, we had been talking already for a couple months, but we were always in a different... I'd be in New York, he'd be in L.A., so I'm like, all right, fuck it. This next time, I'm just going to say we're in the same city and I'll do it remotely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not tell him. That was my plan. But I remember I, you know, it was a very short phone call. He goes, oh, I'm in L.A., I was in New York. And I said, hey, man, before I let you go, congratulations. Since last time we talked, you've really leveled up. You know, that song on the Travis Scott album, the Jack Boys, and how you're just blowing up. Congrats. He's like, yo, thank you, man, thank you. I'm like, all right, cool. So, yo, we're going to get up. This is going to be epic. You know, we'll talk soon. And then, boom, two days later, we find out that he was killed in a, what appeared to be a home invasion with, like, four different people in the Hollywood Hills, not too far from here. <sighs> just just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. It was so sad. It really just messed up, messed me up for a couple of days. Carelessness. Jealousy. Mm-hmm bragging yeah exhibitionism yeah and who the fuck's around you well after the the murder was announced people were going through social media of course and they found that he had actually shown his address carelessness on social media he was i guess it was an airbnb house in the hollywood hills and Jealousy, bragging. You know, you didn't learn nothing from Kim K. Yeah. Why you flossing and all that? What? Now, you know what? I've been guilty of doing it once or twice my damn self. I've taken a while and be like, yeah, bitch, it's because you don't see women comedians doing that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm I trying to be a hardcore chick. But then I have often been advised to stop doing that. So I've maybe only done that twice. But, you know, it's a different culture these days. The motherfuckers want what you got. And they want it now. They want your Cuban link. They want your money. They want your bitch. They want your car. And these four masked people to have plotted against this guy and came up in there, you know, who... Who in his team, if, uh, I had a nip slip one time. Within five seconds, one of my people called and said, take that down, your titties out. <laughs> you know, so why didn't nobody be like, yo, you just put your address on the thing, you know, whatever. Nobody said that. You don't have friends like that. And then you guys just, you know, maybe rappers should start singing about nature and flowers and birds <laughs> and trees because I think that you bring on some of the energy of what you may sing about. Biggie was always talking about not making it if I die before, you know, and, and Pac in case of my demise and all this type of stuff. And you're bringing on this energy. If you if it's about making music, just make music. Why do you got to, you don't have to impress no motherfucker. Lay low. How did the rappers that have been rapping since, you know, how did Buster make it through? How did LL make it through? How did Ice-T make it through? Not by flossing every fucking thing they got on... Social media, not to say that any of this is his fault, but people are jealous these days. These, these bitches are hungry out here in these streets. What was really kind of chilling was after his, his death was announced, a couple of days later, uh, I was in the gym, and I'm like, well, let me listen to his new album because I hadn't had a chance to listen to it yet. And the first song of the album, you know what the title was? What? Invincible. 
And people say, oh, that's just words. That's just a, a song title. But words turn into things. They do. Actions become objects. They do. And you start this album off saying you're invincible. You're going to internalize that in a way. And, and I feel him like, yo, okay, here's a, he was a 20-year-old kid. He wasn't even legal enough to drink. Right. And suddenly he's got all this money and all this fame and he's on Travis Scott's album who's the biggest rapper in the world and he's wearing Louis Vuitton and, and Overnight, off -white. Like Overnight. That. It, like came, that. it came so quick for him. It came so quick. Yeah. Within a year, he went from no one heard of him to everyone knows about him and he's starting to kind of become sort of internationally yeah, known. Yeah, with some really heavy hitters, too. Yeah, yeah, no, people fuck with them. And you still got the gang-related stuff, which he's rapping about. So, you know, he was a crip, and that was something that he put out there very clearly. Uh, but, and now you got all this money, and you got all your homies around, and you do feel invincible. I, I feel it like like I've gone through the this type of like yo when you're popping and you got all these people around you and you got money and whatever like all the insecurities you had before are, are like being addressed and you just feel invincible you feel untouchable like who who going man ain't, ain't no one gonna come close who to me who gonna check me boo yeah. and and we're all we're all just human we're all just flesh and blood Kobe was telling T Mac that you know he's gonna die young. And look what happened. Uh, Tupac talked about dying young and, and dying all through his music. Well, I have asked the good Lord to let me hang on till 96. <laughs> 96? I, yeah, I don't want to be 100. I want to do 100. 96, I'll rock with 96. I, 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 I want to, you know? my, my role, my, my goal is to stick around long enough where they could take my brain and put it into a robot body so I can get an extra thousand years. <laughs> That's my goal. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You know, I I've been... always, I said I was going to donate my my body because I'm being cremated anyway, you know? Okay. And then I thought about it. I said, well, bitch, you're, you're nearsighted. They don't need your eyes. <laughs> your motherfucking lungs have been smoking weed for fucking 30 years. They probably don't want that. You drank like a fish for 20 fucking years. Kidneys probably shot. But I'll be a rock star in the burn unit because I got skin like a motherfucker. So <laughs> well, you can cover a couch with all this skin. It's been a week since he's gotten killed, and LAPD hasn't announced anything. No suspects, right? no motive. The four masks, that's all I know. Yeah, right? and, and there's this is the Hollywood Hills. There are cameras everywhere. Everywhere there are cameras. Not only in people's houses, right. but I'm sure on the light poles right. and whatever else this is a very expensive area they are not messing around out there um and let me let me just a murder of a black rapper in LA obviously is not their fucking top priority i'm just saying yeah you know uh when is eric holder's trial by the fucking way next month april oh not no so two, two months two months yeah in two months from now uh, I, he's probably gonna plead out. There's no point of that trial. I mean, what what are you what are you trying to fight in that trial? It wasn't me. I'm surprised he <laughs> made it this long. It really oh, I'm it. sure they got him well protected. I'm sure he's completely away from anybody. Well, maybe they're pissing and shitting in his food every day, like I could only hope they are. <laughs> like you could only hope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This uh, this case is unsolved and. I really hope this doesn't become... He got parents, you know? He got relatives and shit. Yeah. Like, why? Why? To get what? So what why? Did they rob him? Did they just kill him? I heard well, they didn't even rob him. Yeah, originally they were saying it was a robbery, but then I don't I believe, I don't believe anything was gone. Right. It could have been a hit. Well, it was a hit. It looked like a hit. And if it was a robbery, you got four people people involved how much are you gonna walk away with but how why in the music industry are we talking about hits and robberies why is it not just about music what is this no. you know what is this why what r&b singers ain't getting murdered yeah country singers ain't getting murdered this is true you know uh uh neo soul artists ain't getting murdered 
rappers. Techno artists, like EDM artists. Yeah, ain't nobody murdering his ass. Yeah, I mean, you see an occasional overdose, but you don't see any actual shootings or murders or whatever else. Yeah, they kill their own self accidentally. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know why when it's supposed to be about music. It's supposed to be about a message, you know, but see, that's how rap has changed a bit too, because the rap that I love, the old school rap, you know, Africa Bombada, PE and shit like that, they was rapping about shit. They was rapping about conditions. Yeah. They were social activists. But when you just want to talk about all the shit you got, then I don't know. I don't have the answer to what rap should do to stop this. But I just know that it's 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 too much already. Well, here's here's some free game, me and E40. We were on the phone the other day, chopping it up. And uh, once you get some real money, go get yourself a, a house in a gated community. Okay, don't don't live in a house where anyone could pull up on, right? Uh, E4, you've been living in uh, was it Black Rock for forever. I live in Calabasas. I like the fact that no one could just randomly pull up in front of my house uh, because you're. Although it could technically happen, you got to get past the gate area, and then you know there's no car. You know you can't pull the car up. Like like in my where I live. If I had a friend coming over, I've had friends come over. Take a cart up. No, no, I I don't live in one of those. But I've had friends come over and they've forgotten their driver's license, and they would have to leave their car down the street, and I'd have to go get them and bring them up. They will not allow a car into that into our community without knowing exactly who you are. You see what I'm saying? You're not going to come in here and just while out and then drive through the damn gate afterwards, like. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I went to a really, really super rich person's house just the other day. I'll tell you later. Okay. If I didn't tell you already. And you, first of all, this motherfucker is so tucked up in the motherfucking mountains. A. B, you got to go past the guard. Mm-hmm. You got to get a paper. C, then you got to drive some more. Then there's a gate with a code. And then you get in. Right. The only way to get in this motherfucker is to be let in or you have to scale the Hollywood mountains like a hiker and maybe try to tip in through a valley yeah. some kind of way. And then what are you going to... It's... Uh, uh, you mm, you know, I'm not at that point yet. I'm not at the point. I mean, I, I probably should go somewhere <laughs> and get the fuck out of the 60s. But um, <laughs> I'm not there yet. You know, I'm just not there yet. Right. Popular, yes. Breaded the fuck out, not yet. But right. I need to go too. I've been thinking. Yeah, well... Look, I don't, you've seen no pictures of my house anywhere. You've seen no pictures of my car anywhere. Occasionally I'll live stream inside my car, but you don't know what, what color it is or, or the license plate or whatever, all the crazy shit that, that people do on social media these days. Uh, my family is not on the internet. You don't know what any my relatives or anyone close to me looks like. Uh, I just keep it very private, and it's been working great. I have not posted, I... Yeah, there's people in my life that I just don't post. Maybe a hand or a foot or something like that. <laughs> that that's it. Um, you know, but luckily for luckily for me, because there's if you if you can't get out, there's a way to survive while you're still there before you get out, and you can't be flossing or acting all brand new or any of that shit. Speak to your neighbors, how are you doing, and stuff like that. You just cannot be unprotected and flossing. All your shit, but there he was. Thought he was. I, I, he didn't have alarm on. I heard. I don't know. It's just fucked up. Well, Harvey Weinstein has been convicted of rape. To me, what, one of the most interesting parts about this case is that he would he would he uses Walker every time he got to trial. And after he was convicted, he walked right out. He didn't even use the motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, but they tried that. Michael came to jail in his pajamas. Remember, he was freaking out coming to jail in pajamas. Came to court in his pajamas. And then uh, uh, Bill went went blind during the trial. Right. He went crazy. And now Weinstein <laughs> going to try to use the old Walker defense. That didn't work. So he's been convicted. Good. He's been convicted. I think he's facing about five years. Oh, big deal on Rikers. I hope they go up in him every day. He, he uh, 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 still got a good trial here in L.A., though, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah, Rikers is nothing to fuck with. So now he done, uh, he done claimed heart attack. He done, he yeah, he, he done claimed heart he, attack. He's in the hospital now. Yeah, he's in the hospital now. Uh, he's Lay trying to stretch it out. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's he filed an another, appeal. Well, he's a, a, you know, a producer. He knows how to fucking <laughs> produce. Have you ever done any work with Weinstein at all? Any of his companies? Hell no. And let me just say for well, He's had a lot of movies. Yes, I've not been privy to working in any. Nobody has ever approached me for sexual favors for a role. Mm -hmm. You know, that's never happened to me. I don't know if it's because of my intimidating nature, but ain't nobody fucked with me like that. But I'm just saying, to me, a old, fat, disgusting motherfucker like Harvey Weinstein can't rape me. You pull your dick out, I'm out this bitch. I'll throw something at you. You grab my titty, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to hit you with something. How can, what is he, lock the door and put, I, how can he rape me is what I want to know. When I'm agile, I can hit you with something. And then doesn't rape in, insinuate intercourse? Because from what I heard, he ain't had no dick no goddamn way. <laughs> yeah. I heard it was, he had no testicles in what someone I heard, said. I heard his dick looked like old pig dick. You ever seen a pig dick? No, nah, I, I can't I, wait I, I, to see what title you put on that one, Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> Neil says Harvey Weinstein's dick looks like a pig. Fuck. Uh, well, he can't fuck nobody. That's why he was pushing bitches down in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's he's disgusting from everything. Everybody. 50, 60 bitches. Let me tell you, I've been violated in my day, and I certainly didn't wait to tell nobody. Whether anybody came to protect me is another story. They did not. But I told, you know, I'm not holding on to, what, what career the fuck do you need that you would hold on to some shit like this? I mean, I'd have been done told on this ass. It wouldn't take me no 20 years. I wouldn't have to wait for another bitch to do it. None of that shit. And he can't push me down and rape me. You old fat motherfucker, what the fuck? But see, these little, you know, these little damsel the distressed bitches, Oh my God, what are you doing? Well. Put your dick, I can't believe you, I can't believe you do this to me. Bitch, you should have hit him in the head with a fucking lamp. Well, Bill Cosby decided to chime this in. This motherfucker, <laughs> how does he keep getting quotes the fuck out? Who's well, in there his, quoting? his lawyer put out a statement and there, there was some stuff in the beginning, but oh. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut to the, you know, to the Get interesting to the part, to, to the, the meat, meat of the story says, here's the question that should haunt all Americans, especially wealthy and famous men. Where do we go in this country to find fairness and impartiality in the judicial system? And where do we go in this country to find due process? Lastly, if the Me Too movement isn't just about Becky, a.k.a. white women, I would challenge Me Too and ask them to go back 400 plus years and tarnish the names of all those oppressors that raped slaves. This is a very sad day in the American judicial system. Hey, Bill Cosby, shut the fuck up. You got a lot of motherfucking nerve. Been drugging bitches. Admitted it. <laughs> yeah. Got zero remorse. And he wants due process. Like, what did they supposed to slap him on the wrist and let him go home? You done humiliated your motherfucking wife and your kids that you have left. Like, Bill, I'm not. Why do they keep releasing quotes from Bill fucking, Bill fucking Cosby? <laughs> like, like, and we don't even know if he really said that shit. Maybe his exuberant ass lawyer said the shit. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? Bill might have said it. He might not have said it. Sound like he probably said it. But who gives a fuck what Bill Cosby said? Shut the fuck <laughs> up and eat your pudding, bitch. Ass. Right. And, and apparently, uh, Harvey Weinstein's wife or ex wife at this point is now. The model. You've is, seen her? Is, is now uh, dating. Have you seen her? I've seen her. Do you think she loves fucking that fat bastard? Money grabbing ass bitch? I ain't mad. Get that bag, but it wasn't because she loved him. Fuck out of here. Well, she's apparently dating uh, actor Adrian Brody. Oh, yeah. You know why? Because he's young and his dick works. <laughs> Hell, I want to fuck Adrian Brody. Hey, Adrian. Mm-hmm. She done been with this old fat motherfucker for so long. Right, I'm going to get some dick. I don't give a fuck. Look how big his nose is. His dick has got <laughs> Am I being too explicit no, with you? No, no, you're fine. You're Did fine. You <laughs> you're fine. I should be talking to the girls about this. Okay. Well, 
for anyone that's been watching Vlad TV for a while, Lord Jamar has been a regular guest. Yes, on the my show. my yeah, that's, he's my heart. Mm -hmm. I love him. He spews it out. And uh, some years ago, him and I during our conversation started this dialogue about white people being guests in the house of hip hop. Right. I actually fully agreed with it. As a white kid doing hip hop, I wake up every morning feeling very lucky that I get to do hip hop shit for a living. Get to talk to hip hop artists, get to discuss hip hop matters, telling, you know, doing biographies essentially on certain rappers that might never have an actual biography was or that documentary. Back in his fuck post Malone rant, <laughs> he was on. Uh, he was, yeah, I mean, <laughs> probably around that time. Or before that, actually. Oh. I think this is before Post Malone. So this dialogue was going on for a while. And then Eminem, in his you know, two albums ago, he responded to Lord Jamar and you know, saying, you know, I belong, I belong here, a clown. And, you know, if this was my house, I'd make you go get me the remote and whatever else. And then on his new album, he responded to Lord Jamar again. <laughs> this is two albums in a row. He responded about the whole house of hip hop, and it was like, oh, if hip hop was a house, Coogee Rap would have you mopping the floors and blah, blah, blah. So just recently, Crooked Eye, who was actually a friend of mine, did an interview with Eminem. And he asked him flat out about the white rappers being guests in hip hop, in the house of hip hop. And although they didn't say Lord Jamar's name, it was still, it was clearly about Lord Jamar. He goes, well, I've never addressed this before, but I'm absolutely a guest in the house of hip hop. Which is a complete 180 reversal from everything he said before. And it's just kind of interesting that <laughs> Jamar and I made the, the biggest selling rapper in the world <laughs> basically double back and agree with what we've been saying this whole time. Well, which was never a bad thing to begin no. with. Uh, you know, because, you know, we love the Beastie Boys. We love motherfucking, yeah. you know, M, M, M. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so on and so forth. But, um, and, and you know, Eminem pops the fuck off. You know what I'm saying? He, mm -hmm. he just popped off in the two albums when he said that. He meant it when he said it at the time, I'm sure. But after the dust settles and after it's clear, you realize that hip hop was really born out of the struggle. Hip mm -hmm. hop was born out of, you know, not you know people who were rapping about the conditions that they were living in and the shit that they were seeing, and it was almost like being the last poets or street poets or something like that. And it's hard to equate that with a white boy from Bed Stuy who has a mom and a dad and grew up a certain type of way, but they like the music, so they jump in. And they can do it, and they got swag. However, the struggle that we're rapping about is not your struggle. Therefore, you are a guest. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, I agree. I grew up in the suburbs. Uh, yeah. Eminem did not. He grew up in more of a trailer home. Right. But That's his, why I say, you know, some his, of his the struggle, white artists... His, but it was a different type of struggle. Uh... You know, he has kids with a white woman. Uh, he had the song that came out how black girls are dumb and, you know, you know the, the anti-black girl song that came out back in the day. Mm -hmm. Th this, is, this is someone that just came from a different background and he loved hip hop and he devoted his life to it and he became very good at it. Mm -hmm. And that's all well and good. And he did contribute and he did put on other artists and everything else like that. But still, this was not something that was birthed from people like him. Right. I mean, Eminem can definitely come to the cookout, but it's, it's still going to be our cookout. Right. That's what I'm saying. And there's nothing wrong with being a guest. There's no. nothing wrong with humbling yourself. Just, just, just act like one. Yeah. Yeah. And be on your shit. You know, like I said, BC Boys did it first. Were the Beastie Boys the first first white rappers? Or I think so. I think maybe. Oh, I mean, there's also third. Cypress Hill and all that shit came later. Well, Cypress Hill was Spanish. Okay, well. Yeah, they were Latin. The DJ was white. I mean, the producer right. DJ was white. But uh, third bass. Yeah. Uh, I think came later. 
Yes. I'm thinking Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys, Boys were, were first. first. And look, you could not downplay the contribution to hip hop that white people have made, point blank. When you look at one of the people that really defined the hip hop sound, it was Rick Rubin. Mm hmm. A but white kid that was going to NYU. That sound with the drum machines and everything else like that, because not only did you do the Beastie Boys, but you did LL Cool Run J DMC. and Run DMC and everything else like that. He went on to become one of the greatest music producers of all time. And remains so, because he's yeah. still fucking with, you know, like oh yeah, Jay Z, Jay Z, and and whoever else. He was phenomenal at what he did, and he helped establish a sound. No one is trying to erase white people out of the the hip hop history books. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. But to say, yo, when he first got into it, it was a black art form as well. Mm -hmm. And he was working with mostly black artists. The Beastie Boys were hip hop, but not exactly. It was really more like hip rock. It was punk, punk rock with kind of hip hop beats. And it worked very well. It was very authentic. But the Run DMCs and everything else like that, if it was a bunch of white rappers doing that, it wouldn't have worked. Agreed. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked. And Especially I, then. Yeah, especially, especially then. then. Especially then. And I'm glad that in 2020, hip hop did not become like rock music where it was just, you know, to see like a black rock star is like, ooh, in, you know, living color. Remember them? Oh, these black love guys who do color. rock. Oh, so weird. And it's like, it I kinda, loved it, them though. It came from rock. I still love them. You know, black people created rock and roll and Lenny Elvis Kravitz. Presley. Lenny Kravitz. Yeah, rock. Lenny Kravitz. But white people basically took over the genre. They outsold everybody. They they catered to a larger art form. They got more publicity and so forth. They stole. They stole. Uh, there, there was this great interview with um, Ray Charles <laughs> where, where someone mentioned uh, Elvis Presley. And he was like, yeah, okay, he's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, I know lots of way better musicians Don't than him. Don't get a little Richard started. Yeah. <laughs> But I give props, number one, to Crooked Eye, who's a friend of mine, for bringing up that question because Eminem really interviews with just his friends, like the Sways and the the Crooked Eyes and so forth. And listen, he's earned the right to interview with whoever he wants. Yeah. So a lot of times the tough questions don't get asked. But the fact that Crooked Eye brought that question up, knowing this was going to be the question that kind of really polarizes people and the fact that Eminem actually humbled himself and answered the question how I feel is properly uh I give him props too and I think it finally just kind of buries the the Lord Jamar Eminem beef there's nothing more to really go back and forth over in my next interview uh, me and Jamar will probably discuss it but I can't wait can't wait <laughs> well before I get into my next question who had the the short blonde haircut? Was it you or Amber Rose? Me. You. Okay. You're the OG when it comes I to this. Am. Yeah. When, when she came out, we were like, oh, okay. I mean, anybody <laughs> can wear that. She wore it better, I think. I mean, I'm a bad bitch, but Amber, you know. Yeah. I I I I, I don't know about this face tattoo shit, but I'm talking about the hair, because she seemed like she bleeped, you know, because to wear that low. The new growth comes in like, you know, three or four days. You got to like continuously be bleaching and cutting. So I, I actually, um, I think she looked really great in her low cut like that. And, um, but I've been wearing my hair short and blonde like this before I left Oakland. You know, I'm, my daughter's never even seen my hair not blonde. She's 24 <laughs> years old. Well, I was going to ask about the face tattoo. She got her son's names tattooed on her forehead. It's the dumbest shit ever beautiful girl like that what the fuck you know why 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 not on the back of your neck why not on your arm why on your fucking face what you gonna look like when you're 70 oh wrinkle up what nobody be able to read this shit <laughs> well that's some dumb uh, shit apparently kobe's death inspired her to do that bullshit <laughs> stupid ass move she already got the dog she had to cover up wigs on her arm she just likes, you know, she likes, I don't know, she's making a statement. But that was, I don't think anybody should be tattooed on their face. Unless it's like a little heart, maybe, or if you got to kill somebody, get a teardrop, that's what you got to do. But all this writing on your face, your face! 
Yeah. You know? Yeah, face tattoos is... It's so It's so interesting how commonplace they are right now. I mean, really for a girl. The brothers can do whatever they want. You know, the Latinos, the brothers, they can do whatever they want. You know, some of them have some beautiful little artwork, depending on, you know, whatever. But I'm not really a big fan of the face tattoos and a girl with names across her forehead. I was the big fan of it. Uh, I know Amber. I've interviewed her before. Uh, pretty... I'm sure that was captivating. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. She's a cool girl. She's cool. People don't realize how tall she is. Yeah, she's a big she's girl. She's like we, we five. Of, yeah. We made a Nick Cannon movie together, School Dance. Oh, you were in School Dance. Mm -hmm. Oh, with true. uh, oh, you know who? Else Everybody, is in Nick it? and Christina Debar, well, the... and Lopez, Cat and Lil Duval and Mike Epps and. Kevin yeah. and Tiffany and everybody's in there. I had interviewed Ben J from the New Boys, who mm -hmm. was in that also. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. he killed somebody in a, in a home invasion Did situation. He? Yeah. Is he locked up now? No, it's self defense. Someone was trying to oh. basically, someone had broken into his house and tried to rob him oh. with a gun. Once again. He ended up killing him with self defense. Well, the situation involved a armed robbery, a home, a home invasion armed robbery where the person rushed in yeah. and didn't know you had a gun right. on you. You ended up shooting in self-defense and you ended up killing him. That's sad, bro. Now that some time has passed and you actually told your story and you cried as you told it, do you feel better about the situation or does it still bother you the same way? I feel way better, honestly, because the reason why I cry it's because I felt like so much pressure was on me. Like, I know talking to you is like talking to one person, but you got hella views and, you know what I'm saying, people looking at your stuff. So I knew I was instantly talking to, like, the whole world. You know what I'm saying? It's just like everybody looking at me. You know what I'm saying? The lights on me. It's just like, damn, I really did kill somebody. Like, it's not a game. Like, that he, he's gone. His life is not here no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel, you know what I'm saying, I don't feel sorry for the situation because nobody made him do that. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I feel bad for his decisions. You know what I'm saying? Because he did have kids and a family. You feel me? So, hey. Yeah, and that's what a motherfucker gonna get if they fuck with the wrong person. Yeah. Yeah, as they should. As I mean, you well know. Yeah. As they should. Well, Amber's got the forehead tattoo. She's been defending it on the on the internet. Uh, Explain it to your children. Listen, it's her face. She can do what she wants you know, with it. She wants to, but I would have never fucked up that pretty ass face. Yeah, and it's interesting how you see uh, certain trends happen. Like someone will get, like for example, like remember when Cassie shaved off half her half mm -hmm, her hair. Mm -hmm. I saw a bunch of girls. You'd walk around malls and you'd see a bunch of girls. But she didn't invent that either. You know, I know I mean? she didn't invent it, but she popularized it. Maybe. Yeah. I don't see a bunch of girls getting forehead tattoos after this. Well, they can do what the fuck they want to. It's still stupid. I don't give a fuck who do it. <laughs> if Janet Jackson do it, I don't give a fuck who do it. Michelle Obama, anybody, if you get it on your face, it's like a loon. You better hope you can weave you in some bangs, mm -hmm. maybe, and cover that shit up when it's time to go to court, maybe. Or, or 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 go to, go to your kid's school, cause it's just it's just it just there's just no point in that. But that's my opinion. Like you say, people can do what the fuck they want to do. Well, you know, we were talking about the Harvey Weinstein situation and the the Bill Cosby situation. Just recently, a woman sued Rick James's estate for fifty million dollars because he allegedly raped her in. 1979, <laughs> 41 years ago. <laughs> He's been dead for what, 10 years now? <laughs> and she she wants that money. Hey, Rick might have done that shit, but it's 40 fucking one years later. <laughs> 41 years later. 41 years, not four years, not one year. 41 years later. I would, you know, have to your friend, the bitch, get the fuck out of here, defense. Like, <laughs> you should have been done, you know. What are you, what, what is it you, it's, it's got to be the money because you don't want to, what, what are you talking about? 41 years. 41 years ago. How do you even piece that together at this point? And he's not there to defend himself. 
now he went to prison for doing just that doing something doing, kinda, doing, doing that I, I believe he like him and his girlfriend like tied Took up some girl hostage, and burnt with the crack with pipe, the crack made pipe made them fuck pipe each other and, and smoke crack made them smoke big crack. old gangster plot okay, so, so we're not gonna say that Rick James I ain't saying Rick didn't do this shit <laughs> I'm just saying bitch it's too late I'm not saying he didn't do it I'm bitch sit down it's too late I'm <laughs> not saying he didn't do it don't put a fast in, but it's too, it's too late it's, it's just team. too late get his bitch uh Gift card, uh, fucking Starbucks, get the fuck out my face. Well, I, I'm i just wondering, like, why don't they have laws where you can't sue an estate after the person's died? Now, if you have a lawsuit pending with somebody and, then and they, they die, die. Yeah. I got it. Okay, cool. That, that should keep going. But you got to wait for that person to be dead 10 years. 10 years. And then, you know, same thing with Michael Jackson, right? A judge apparently is letting them to, you know, allowing them to go forward with that lawsuit. This man had been dead for 10 plus years. You know, I remember I was talking about this with a friend the other day. I think the coldest, the coldest thing that lawyers have pulled off in this country, and don't get it twisted, lawyers run America. All this, all the politicians are lawyers, okay? Most of them. Lawyers, pharmacists, lawyers, and hoes. Lawyers run this country, and whoever the first lawyer was to to represent their client and sue someone for emotional distress and win, that was the coldest hustle ever created. Right. You don't have to prove it. There are no physical signs. There are no... No witnesses. There's no witnesses. I I was emotionally distressed. Inside of me, I felt so bad that I just need $10 million to heal that. Well, there ain't no telling what's going to come out with me uh, about me 40 years out, <laughs> after I'm gone because I done done some shit with some motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, Emotional distress, yo, and people really get that. People really get that in court. 40 years ago. 40 years ago. I was so you know, emotionally bitch distressed. bitch me in front of everybody. And I suffered emotional distress, and she's been dead about 12 years, and I'm going to get that bitch. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Watch the rug. I think since I think since last time that we talked, uh, Takashi has accepted, well, he got sentenced to two years in prison. Two. The amount of people that went down, there was like 10 people that got anywhere from five years to, I think, 17 years. In prison, uh, the newest the newest defendant just got seventeen years. Uh, this guy named Nuke, uh, he took down the whole that whole crew single handedly, and walked away with it with the shortest prison sentence, two years with already one year time served, and you're gonna yeah you know you can carve a little eighty five percent off the two. He'll be home. He'll be home for for fucking Christmas. He'll will be home for Christmas probably for summer. And it sends such an interesting message to anyone that says, look, it doesn't matter how bad the crime was. As long as you tell on everyone, you'll get a slap on the wrist. If they're going to kill poor Pop Smoke and not hurt Takashi when he come out, I, 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 I don't want to say nothing. I'm just I'm saying. just saying. I mean, Zimmerman's still walking saying. around. Yeah, that bitch. Oh, my God. Zimmerman is still Zim, walking. Zimmerman trying to sue somebody. Didn't he try to sue somebody? He, he for... tried. To, I think he sued Jay Z. He's also suing two of the presidential, the the Democratic candidates, based on things they've said. And he said he said, said he was suing somebody for idolizing Trayvon or some some crazy shit like that. And and a guy that tried to kill him went to jail. Remember, there's some road rage incident. Yeah, some he guy. probably was part of Illuminati. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, because he got some protection around him. He should have been gone. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty crazy. Well, Takashi's gonna get out. We're gonna see what happens. Yeah, because I can't, you know, in good conscience as 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 a Christian, I can't <laughs> wish harm on another person because they too have relatives and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But you know, snitches, snitches get stitches where I come from. And there's one thing in telling something so you can save your family or save your own ass or something like that. And it's another just giving motherfuckers up 10 deep. 
So we'll, we'll see. Well, because it's interesting because I recently did two interviews. Okay. One of the interviews I did, and this will be out by the time this part of the interview comes out, it was the Clips's old manager, this guy named Anthony GZ Gonzalez. Mm. He was caught running like a $20 million uh, drug operation. Uh, one of the guys, like his plug, ended up testifying against him and so forth. And he signed a immunity clause for his family because his, his mother was being charged, his wife was being charged because they... You know, they were making payments or cashing checks or whatever. So mm. when it comes to a RICO indictment, the $1 connected to it, you're, you're part of it, mm -hmm. right? So he actually cooperated in exchange for them dropping all the charges for his family. Okay. I got your family. What you going to do? This is like <laughs> in black and white, you know, so it's like this or that. So it was like me go to trial, they get locked up. But in the feds, I was already got because when you got the connect telling on everything you bought from them, I was gonna lose trial and I was gonna get life. I was gonna get life. So I'm looking at it like okay. I take the 32 years and I can sleep good knowing that my family ain't locked up. I interviewed this guy named Kevin Childs. He was one of the, the Harlem drug kingpins. And he was facing like 45 years, I think, and he was running a big drug empire as well. 22 people got hemmed up in his indictment, including uh, his aunts and, and so forth and, and his uh, his cousins. He actually refused to sign any sort of cooperation agreement. They ended up dropping the charges against everyone else eventually. But, you know, we had a conversation about this, about would you tell in order to, to save your family? family. Right, because the other day, all that shit that you're thinking about really doesn't matter. Yeah, but if you know the what? Feds, if the feds want to paint the story a certain type of way, and if the jury wants, you know, I goes agree. along with how the feds paint it with their 97% conviction rate, your whole family could have gone to prison. That could have been the end of the day. I agree. The end of it. But for me, you know, um, and most Americans, when we think about the feds, we think they are the, uh, the barometer of truth. Right. It's what you want to believe. This is this is what they disseminate to, to, to the public. Right. So... For me, I needed to know what this looks like when you go to a jury and like where the pictures, where the phone calls, where, where the wiretaps, where, where the drug transactions. These people were, didn't do any of this. Okay. So I just couldn't wrap my hands around the concept of, and, and again, that was the card that they played. Okay. I, just, I just didn't go for it. So, so let me ask you a question, uh, uh, you know, if you could answer it honestly. Absolutely. If ultimately, it was 100% sure that if you do not cooperate with them, your kids' mothers, your kids' mother, your aunts, your cousins are all going to prison for substantial periods of time. Would you still not cooperate? It's just not in me, Black. And I remember Jeezy was saying how he's like, yeah, you know, I look at those people, you know, who were locked up with me who refused to cooperate and their mothers are in prison and so forth. And I was like, yeah, I don't know how they I did it. Yeah. I don't know how they did it. And, and it's, it's a very interesting conversation. Like, okay, everyone says, don't snitch, don't snitch, don't snitch. But would you snitch to save your mother from getting 20 years? Yes, I would. Yeah, I would. You, you know, I'm, I'm going to go down and take some motherfuckers with me if my mom and my family... My mother? Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd have to do it. But then again, these motherfuckers lie so much, there's no guarantee that you're not going to stitch and they still take your mama down. Yeah, facts. See, so that's where it gets tricky because it's not like you can just trust what the police say. Yeah. If we do this, we'll do this. That's the oldest trick in the fucking book. Well, I interviewed uh, Earthquake recently. We had our first interview and uh, he proudly declares himself a snitcher. He said, if they caught me, they caught us. <laughs> he said he was snitch on his own Earthquake mother. Was, Earthquake was snitch. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was snitch on his own mother. He said, you've lived your life. Let me live mine. You called yourself a snitcher. Oh, yeah. Sears so definitely snitching. There you go. If they catch me, they caught us. <laughs> That's why I don't do nothing. I can't go to jail. They rape motherfuckers. <laughs> you said you would snitch on your own mother. You got damn right. She got to do the time. <laughs>
<laughs> she done lived her life. Let me live my life. Shit. Fuck it. Let's snitch on grandma. She 80. We looking for a place to put her. Look at God. Won't he do it? <laughs> Well, you both need to look behind bars if you fucking snitch. He said, you snitch on his own grandmother. He I'm said, calling Quake about that. <laughs> he said, look, we're going to put her in a home anyway. I'm going to recap that. I'm going to get No, he's going to snitch. But he also said that, that he realized early on that, that he's not going to do anything to be put in a situation where you would have to decide not to snitch or not. He right. He purposely, he realized it early on. He went to the military and everything else like that. Uh... He realized early on that he's not, he doesn't want to do anything illegal. So he was never having, he never put himself in that situation. Well, I did, you know, crimes and I yes. did time and I did it alone. So right. I didn't have nobody to snitch on. I did my crimes alone. So, so nobody, could you have, so you didn't know of anyone else that was doing, because this was at the bank, right? When you were right. stealing from the bank. Right. So there was no one else involved at all. No. You were... Doing the solo. That's right. Which is usually the best way to do it anyway. Right. <laughs> Everything I ever did before I got busted for that, I did solo. Too. <laughs> I don't need a crime partner. I figured out my fucking self. Yeah. Yeah, listen, we all make mistakes. Uh, I made mistakes. I paid paid my debt to society, yeah. restitution, the whole thing. Yeah. I'm a new woman. I wouldn't steal a nickel off the pool table these days. <laughs> I might take your weed if you leave it laying around, though. Sorry, there was a situation in Indiana that we covered recently. This woman goes on like Instagram Live and was announcing that there was a gay man that she just found out. This this dude that she was dealing with. Oh yeah, was was on the the down, down low, low and and they whacked. He, he, he's gonna have to pay her fifty thousand, or else she's gonna she's gonna expose him. Yeah, and then they whacked her, and then right after she got killed. Not to say that she deserved it, but she deserved it. She deserved it. Come on now. You're extorting somebody. Yeah, but you're fucking putting my life in jeopardy with your down low ass. Okay. Do you know, what do you mean, okay? Do you know that black women are the highest rate of motherfucking AIDS carriers in the world right now? Why? Because of, you know, drug use and this and that, and because of these down low brothers that's going out and sucking dicks and fucking guys and coming home kissing you and the kids in the mouth. Now okay. that is infuriating. If you want to expose this man, then go ahead and expose him. But to say you got to pay me 50000 or oh. else I'm going to put it out there. Oh. You are playing with your life at that point. Extortion is a felony for a reason. Oh. Okay, you can't live in a, in a regular society while you're extorting people. Okay, maybe I was just getting emotional <laughs> thinking about... <laughs> <laughs> me and what I would do if I, which I have found about about some down low motherfuckers. And I, did I tell? I told my friends, but I didn't tell and I didn't threaten and I haven't exposed a motherfucker yet. And I could, I got the receipts, uh, but I wouldn't say black. I, 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 I'm too scary. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't commit crimes no more. So I, I don't commit crimes no more. So I, I wouldn't try to blackmail somebody because then you end up fucked up like old girl. That's terrible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. Don't don't try to extort people. Don't don't play with people. Don't play with people like that. If you're going to do something, do it. Do it for the right reasons. Now, if you feel like okay, look, this is someone he's exposing who, who's who's I mean, because sex he's practices. doing unsafe sex, you know, and so forth. We don't know whether he was, you know, what his HIV status was or whatever yeah. else. We, we don't know. We don't know. But if you're out there. Give me 50 racks or I'm going to spill 50 it. 50 racks or I'm going to spill it. Then, oh, Bitch, now I'm you. dead. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> it is what it is. Just like. I don't blackmail people. I don't play that shit. Yeah, I mean, just I've like you know, too much forensic file yep. and for my man and shit like right. that. Because you know, you know how we talked about the Ben J situation and you, know, you, you did the movie with him. You run up in someone's house. You better be prepared to die that day. Yeah. Okay. You go up in someone's house, armed or not. Yes. You had better be prepared, prepared to die, to die right. that day because that person will be should. Be prepared to kill you. Fuck, fuck you up. I have guns all over my house. Mm -hmm. If you come into my house, I will try to kill you yes. to my best ability. A yes. gun, knife, my dog, whatever. Remember when I'm I broke into off. LL's house and he beat that ass and drug. Remember they broke a guy broke into LL 
There was a home oh, invasion in yeah, LL's yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, I think I heard And about LL that. actually got the guy and whooped, mopped the fucking floor with the foot. Because he's like, my wife well, is upstairs, my well, kids uh, are in here. Most recently, Bun B. Mm. Remember, remember that situation? Mm-mm. Oh, you didn't hear about this? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Some bozo in, you know, I guess in Houston knocks on the door and his wife answers. He's upstairs somewhere, mm-hmm. like in the bathroom or something. Mm-hmm. And this guy basically storms into a house mm-hmm. with a gun, not realizing whose house it is. Bun B goes and grabs his gun corners the guy in his garage in the car and shoots the car up the guy gets hit like you know a bunch of times he survives and uh everyone's like bravo <laughs> bravo this guy's lucky to be alive right now shout out to bun b shout right? out to bun b ugk yeah. right you know he said you know you know i spoke to him afterwards he said they had to move out of that house you know his wife yeah, didn't want to yeah. live there yes yeah. yeah it's pretty messy but uh oh i would never go up in somebody's house honey yeah, you I go up in someone's house, j- j- just just understand. What do you, if you feel go... like? What do you, you don't even know. Like, yeah. it can look like nobody's there. Somebody could be laying there asleep on the couch. You don't know if there's a fucking rabid dog in this motherfucker. You don't know. Oh, yeah. I got I got a Rottweiler. My, a friend of mine, rich lady friend of mine, has three. Yeah. Three Rottweilers. And they you can't drop a, 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 a toothpick on the front porch. Them motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, my, my dog is crazy. My dog is absolutely crazy. Shit. She will tear you but up. But for not for the, like for anybody not affiliated with the family or the. Oh dad no no no! Well, my family, to... she she loves everybody. She's never bitten any of us. Nothing else like that. But trust me, you go up in there. Even when I act aggressively towards her, just playing, she'll she'll lunge at me. <laughs> you know. Well, Dolce, our little dog, she ain't gonna do nothing but like go get a toy. Yeah. But she'll know somebody's in the house. Uh, we just posted a story. Uh, I guess this was in Nigeria. A woman, uh, sorry, a man pulls out his wife's teeth after learning his three kids are not biologically his. Damn, that's drastic. Fuck. <laughs> you know, Ow, three, fuck. It is drastic. He, he was wrong for they that. They don't fuck around in Africa. They don't fuck around in Africa. Okay. They don't fuck around in Africa. Pull uh, your fucking teeth out, bitch. <laughs> have you seen the picture? <laughs> I don't want to see the picture. You want to see it? Maybe. All right. I, doctor, is that the same person? Yes, that's the same person. Oh, that's not right. I mean, three kids though. It, it's okay, not. It's so not. It's not. It's not right. It's not right. He could go okay. on snaps. What well, you snapped. you uh, he snapped? And you know. Well, what happened to him? Well, I'm sure he was arrested. Uh, Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. After, but then again, Nigeria, made made game we understand. High five, right. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. Pull the bitch teeth out. You won't be sucking no more dicks with these teeth, bitch. Well, maybe you will be. Maybe better. Yeah, maybe better. You guys are nasty. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like. God damn. You hear, look, like I know people who had kids who are kids and they didn't know that their father wasn't really their father until later on. Mom cheated with the guy sure, at work sure. and, and so forth. This, this happens. I've seen this multiple times. And then the kid, they don't tell so the kids. Jerry Springer every day. Every day. It's on Jerry Springer. And all that shit. I've never heard of three though. She continued to basically get pregnant by other men and have these kids and pretend like the, that's Well, maybe he's mess. gross. Maybe she don't want to fuck him. Okay, so you go and have... Maybe she didn't know there was the other guy's kids. He, maybe he's, she he's, actually, he's actually not a bad-looking guy. He's a fucking moron. He's not a bad-looking man. Look at him. Be, no. That don't mean his genitalia is good. Well, I, I don't know about his genitalia. Well, I'm just saying. So I don't have woman, pictures of that. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I want to see Any woman is fucking somebody else unless she's just a tramp-ass bitch and a thought is something wrong in the bedroom with y'all. Now, for her to get pregnant three times, is it three different men's baby or all three babies the same I, man? I, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. But, you know, there was this movie... Uh, it was actually based on a real story from Clinton uh, Correctional Facility. It's called Escape to uh, Denimora. Have you ever seen that? Mm-hmm. It was about 
because I just interviewed Shaheem, mm -hmm. uh, who just did six years in mm -hmm. Clinton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about he was there when this happened. These two inmates escaped from Clinton Maximum Security Prison mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because both of them were fucking this lady that worked there. The guard. Oh. She wasn't really a guard. She she basically, it was like, you know how prisoners work in, in prison in yeah, terms yeah, of like jobs? Yeah, and shit. Yeah, like, like they were basically putting together like, it was like, like a sewing uh, room where everyone was putting together jeans and clothing or whatever else, and she was a supervisor. Okay. So she was fucking two of these different guys, right? She was fucking one of them, and then he got transferred out because they found out, and then this other guy started fucking her, and... She went and brought him like hacksaws and stuff. And she was married this whole time. Let's not forget this. Yeah. Let's not forget this part. She was married this whole time and she was fucking him at work. And she got him all the tools and they escaped and it became like the biggest news ever. It was yeah. like a national I, I, manhunt. I, I, I remember that. Yeah, you don't hear of prisoners escaping from maximum security prisons in America. <laughs> and, uh, and, here, and here, and she went to prison herself. And her good. husband is waiting for her. Waiting for it. Waiting for her to come back. Trick. He's a but, trick. But um, good dick will make you go get a hacksaw. <laughs> good dick will make good, you go good get dick a hacksaw. Will make you go get a hacksaw <clears throat> for a motherfucker. Well, speaking of, of good dick, pause. In Utah, they've actually made polygamy legal. What else they got to do in Utah? Shit. Well, the Mormons. Yeah. Right. I lived in Sandy, Utah for a while. Really? I did. Why? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I I was singing. I, the first time I ever went on the road for anything, you know, uh, 80s newspaper ad. Background singer needed for singer Bobby Freeman. I'm thinking it's the motherfucker that sang The Swim, you know. And I'm like, oh, they need a background singer. And they're like, blah, blah, blah. Pack your bags. Meet us in Sandy, Utah. But it was this guy named Bobby Freeman who was sort of like a, Elvis knockoff guy who sang lounges, you know, at the Hilton Ballroom and shit like this. And they really did want background singers. So I flew to Sandy, Utah, and lived in the studio and went on the road with this guy. But our home base was in Sandy, Utah. I was like maybe one of three black people out there. And <laughs> I think I might be wrong with that count. But um, there was lots of the polygamy. I mean, that's just their thing. Well, that's they're why Mormons. they're in Utah, yeah, not in Mormons. San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're Mormons. And honestly, I remember studying this in high school because polygamy went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court actually struck it down because they felt that something to do with the, the general consensus of the values of America was against it. But I always thought... And we even discussed how this was just kind of weird because you have these willing participants. Who cares? Right. Who cares? It's not like this guy's living a double life. He's got two families and he gets caught and says, ah, polygamist. No. Right. Like everyone They're knows about together. it. They're living in the same house. Listen, sometimes a, a wife could use a sister wife when it comes to taking care of these motherfuckers. Sometimes it's like, look, I don't feel like fucking this motherfucker this week. He's on my nerve. You go fucking. <laughs> you go it fuck can him. work. You know, and you cook and I'll do the dishes or whatever. Like, it can't work. You know, African tribes had multiple wives. Oh, yeah. Well, Muslim Muslim culture, and I remember speaking to Muslims about this, like from Africa and so mm -hmm. forth in the Middle East. Not only is it allowed, but it's actually encouraged and sometimes required when a man has a certain amount of money. Sure. He should... He's kind of he's considered like selfish if he does not support multiple women. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like you have all this money and you just have one wife, or you could have you could be helping to support five different women and have more children. And everyone, you know, but there's certain rules around it where you can't put the the young wife in the mansion and have the old wife like in a shack. Like everyone has to be treated there's a equally. Tenure. Yeah. Well, everyone has to be treated equally. So if, if you buy one wife a house, you have to buy the other four a house also. If you buy one wife a goat, you got to get the other wife a goat. Yeah, exactly. Goats for everybody. Goats for everybody. Goats for everybody. You get a goat. You get a goat. You get a goat. I mean, I had to share a motherfucker back in the 70s one time, you know. It worked out well for me. Yeah. She wasn't so happy. It was recently announced 
that Brian Tyree Henry, who is best known for playing Paperboy on the on the series for Atlanta, you know, the Atlanta series, okay. Donald Glover's series, will be Marvel's first gay superhero. Well, if he has a smazzy outfit and he can fly, <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. He may not be the first. He may be the first we're talking about. The first the first out of the closet? I mean, hell, look at Superman. was always dressing in drag. He'd jump up in the fucking phone booth and pull off his clothes, put his little outfit on, go fly and fuck around. You know, he and never did marry uh, Lois, fucking Lane. Lois Lane. Well, if you really think about it, when you look at just the overall fashion sense of pretty much all superheroes. That you talk about Batman and his tights and Robin and right. that shit. Yeah, I mean, you got Robin, you got Superman, you got pretty much, I mean, all you the X-Men. You have to wear that to make you fly better. All the X-Men, I mean, you, like, you who wears this? You fly in pockets. You got to fly sleek. <laughs> the aerodynamics, you got to have a little outfit on like that leotards and shit. Yeah, it, it's, uh, listen, it, it is what it is. And... You know, you and I have talked about this. The gay community don't play when it comes to people who they feel are slighting them. Like, you know, we talked about Boosie earlier in the interview. He got banned from Planet Fitness. They, The manager, who I guess was gay, was so upset over the comments he made about Dwayne Wade's son <laughs> that he banned him from Planet Fitness. Planet ooh. Fitness, and let me just Look, say, <laughs> Planet Fitness is like, I what, $10 a month? No more. <laughs> they be doing me a fucking favor if they ban me from Planet Fitness. <laughs> Shit. Oh, man. Well, Brian Tyree Henry, good luck with that role. It's going to be interesting to see I what happens. I don't know a lot of gay comic book readers, but there's everybody, I, you know, there's, just because I don't know them don't mean the, the fuck out there. But I think that any superhero, gay or straight, or any gay character that they show in a positive light that is helping people and maybe helping people to understand things and teaching good lessons is all, all right with me. You know, I don't read my gay superhero flying down and slapping lipstick on motherfuckers, but, you know, if you're teaching teachable moments that can help, with, like I said, the bullying, bullying and shit. Right on, right on. They can be a superhero. Well, uh, just recently, Billy Porter apparently is going to be on Sesame Street. That's fine. And I believe there's there might be a gay Sesame Street character coming up. That's cool, too. And it's interesting. I remember I was talking to a woman about this. And we were talking about... Isn't Bill- there already gay characters on Sesame They, they say Street? Bert and Ernie are gay, but it was never confirmed. Well, how would in in fact, Sesame Street said... Bert and Ernie are not gay or straight. They're not sexual. They're Muppets. They're they, puppets. Don't have, they don't have genitalia. <laughs> they don't have genitalia, so you, they can't really be anything. They don't kiss and but stuff like that. I remember I was talking to a female about Billy Porter, and, and she's like, yo, the thing about Billy Porter is his outfits are so on point. That's fucking fabulous. <laughs> oh, look, See, look. I, I, don't, I don't view this. like As a man, I'm like, whatever. But apparently from a woman's perspective like he is just so fly with his we shit. We just want everybody to be great. If you're gonna be a drag queen, be a great one. If you're gonna be cross dresser, be a great one. Caitlyn Jenner missed the fucking mark. You don't want to change your voice yet, Caitlyn? Sound like a linebacker. If you look like <laughs> fucking Hollywood Heart, which was Ving Rhames, mm, mm, mm. But if you're gonna be that, if you're gonna express yourself, Try to be the baddest motherfucker out there. Try to do. Billy Porter is like changing opinions of people, you know, about what people can wear and stuff like that. But that's Billy Porter. I don't think that a line of clothes is going to come out like that for the brothers and Calvin Klein's going to go like, you know, Dion Cole is catching hell for them bell bottoms. Oh, those bell bottoms. I saw that. I saw that. Uh, them bell bottoms. I, I know them. Dion. I mean, he's been on the show a few times. You no, know, I know Dion. I've been knowing Dion for yeah. five years. But he did look like he had childbearing hips in <laughs> them bell bottoms. When I saw those bell bottoms, and you know, we can't show the picture of I, sure, I but... thought the shit was Photoshop. I said, Dion ain't put no <laughs> shit like that. And Dion is, well, I mean, th- th- there's nothing really feminine about no, those Dion bell bottoms. No, Dion loves bitches. 
Yeah. But but I said, oh shit, they done got to him. They done fucking got to him. Here, put these, if you wear these bell put bottoms, these bell you'll, bottoms on, you'll be the you'll biggest. You'll be the next Lord of the Rings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you will have the starring role. I said, oh, they done fucking Meet got to him. Meet me in my hotel at 4 a.m. I am looking. I said, I thought, I, you know, I don't see that goddamn good. I'm like, is he, what? What is the is it? I thought somebody photoshopped and shit. No, it was him. Apparently, he was beefing with somebody. I forgot who it was. He was going back and, and they forth. They bet him. Tell me, it was a bet. No, he was beefing. Like, like they, they were arguing I know, on the internet. But was, uh, if he lost the the beef, I, I, he had to wear bell bottoms. I mean, he still looked good, but just from here, up. it wasn't his style for me. I mean, Dion could wear fucking want to, but for me, I was like side eye and that shit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that like be like me throwing up with some old Lizzo thong on. They'd be like, bitch, what? That's actually a very interesting question. Here's Lizzo, who is, you know. Supple. Supple. Who insists on. Being half naked. Being half naked, wearing thongs. Clapping her ass. Clapping her ass and, and doing stuff like that. As a woman who doesn't have a traditional Hollywood shape. Right. As a woman who I would say has a similar body type, mm -hmm. what did you think of that? Well, I thought that, that uh, she did, what's the magazine spread that she did? Rolling Stone? Mm. With Rolling Stone? Uh, she did a magazine spread cover and everything. Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone. Yeah. I thought her Rolling Stone magazine pictures was some of the most beautiful shit I've ever seen on a big bitch. They styled her in such a way to where she looked like a big, you know, you know, all the Greek statuettes were big girls. They all had bellies and little saggy titties and all that type of stuff. All the Greek goddesses. Yeah, I'm looking at it. See, well, aren't they pretty? The, David LaChapelle did it, who's, who's a wizard. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Be I said, this is some of the most beautiful shit I've ever seen on a big woman. The outfit of the basketball game for me, not so much. Yeah. Um, just for the sanitation of it all, you know? <laughs> sanitation mm. of it yes. all. Yes. But um, um, I think that some of this shit is a little unnecessary like that and you know, clapping my ass on Instagram. I don't think she really need to do that. But I think that if she perpetuates beauty and sensuality and positivity, even her badass in them bikinis and shit, <laughs> I was like, how'd you get that shit on? It's like, <laughs> how did they put it up? How'd she get that on? As you know, I got, you know, I would never, uh, me, I would, I would never, even though I was naked in penthouse. Right. Six page spread, mm. April first, twenty seventeen. <laughs> um, even though I was naked and pin out, we did it in a, such a way to where it was just more sensual, rather than you know I wasn't sitting there holding my you know vagina lips open, no shit like that. I got fucking kid, but I think that if you keep shit classy, mm -hmm. you know, then you get more um, better response, you know, from people who like. You know what? She does look good. Not that you got to please anybody. This is, you know, motherfucking America. The fuck you want to. Lizzo, yeah. at the end of the day, no matter how naked the fuck she may be or may not be, no matter who like it or don't like it, when she opens her fucking mouth, she does her fucking job. Yeah. You know, she sings her ass out. She writes great lyrics. Yep. And, you know, she's breaking a mold and she's doing shit. That I told you, I want to do. I, people keep. I, I want to do big fat girl movie. I want to have Lizzo, M Melissa McCarthy, Rebel Wilson, myself, all the fat bitches. Let me just take over something. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, uh, fat ladies, excuse me. Fat, oh, supple uh, ladies. Supple ladies. Well, uh, I'm gonna finish this interview off on a more somber tone. I was listening to one of your other interviews. And you talked about how your sister got killed. Yeah. Can you talk about that situation? Yeah, I have a sister who was um, older than myself, 16. She's five years older than me. I was 16. She was 21. And over on Normandy, where she used to live, 
Um, somebody she knew, because her place did not get broke into, she let them in, and then they stabbed her to death in front of her child, my nephew, oh, man. who was special needs as well. And um, it was horrific. It was the whole Nicole Brown Simpson treatment. It wasn't nice at all. And we, you know, had to go to the place and you see the blood on the walls and clots in the floor. I mean, I went through that. And um, we've never found who it was. I've seen a psychic, I've talked to police, I've tried to do mm. cold case file, everything like that, never found out who it was. So the thing that's always haunted me is what if somebody is sitting right here at my fucking show that killed my sister? And I would never know. So her child saw this? Yeah, but he was a baby. Like, uh -huh. she got stabbed up and then crawled or was dropped off at my brother's front door, which was downstairs and a few feet away. They lived in a adjoining complex. Uh -huh. And actually, my sister-in-law had to go back up and get the baby who had blood on him, because I guess my sister was trying to get the baby and couldn't do it. So. They never found the guy? Mm-mm. And this was what, in the? Well, when I was 16, so, you know, a few years ago. A few years ago. ago. This was before ago. DNA evidence. Yeah, before DNA. No cameras around. No, no cameras. No, no, no cell, cell phones. phones. You can't triangulate nothing. No, no. People really just got away with shit back then. Yeah. People really could just move to the next town over, and that was that. Yeah. Um, man, that's such a sad it's story. It's usually somebody you know that fucks you up. Yeah. Because they... They can get to you when other people can't. You'll let them in. Then yeah. they'll fuck you up. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, because we, we talked earlier about the Pop Smoke situation. I let very few people into my home. I've stopped doing I, it. I don't have house parties. I've stopped doing it. I've that. never had a house party, actually, in the last 10 years. I used to have them all the time. Yeah, nope. I don't have I don't, house don't parties. Do if you want to meet me, I'll meet you at a restaurant somewhere. If you've been in my home, you and I are pretty close. And you got to, you know, I think Suge said it best. He said that uh, you don't have to worry about your enemies because they can't borrow your car. They can't, they're they not in your home. In your house. They don't know they're how to get in your house. house. They don't know your movements. Yeah. They're all outsiders. You got to worry about your friends. Yes. Those are the ones that could really hurt you. Right. And if you even look at his situation, he went to that Tam's parking lot, you know, a whole, whole thing with a friend. Terry Carter was his friend who he ended up killing on accident. But, you know, he got wrapped up in this situation with people that he knew. It wasn't a bunch of outsiders. And we spend so much time worrying about people that we're beefing with and so forth. Like, and I've had all types of beefs over the over the years uh, with Vlad TV, but yeah, no one was really able to do very much at the end of the day. Like, no one was able to do any sort of lasting damage to to anything that that I ever had going on. And most of my real problems came from people that were around me. Sure, and I've been used and abused and all that stuff. But I just try to live my life, and I have gotten to a stage in my life to where I hope that God has given me the discernment to have the people who I even have a question about pushed back. And my circle is very, very small that comes in my house anymore. Very small. And I used to be the party house. You know, my you know my husband wasn't living with me, and I always had money, I always had weed, I always had a bar, I always had food, you know, and everybody used to come to my house. It was a flop house. They would hang out and mm -hmm. sleep and eat, and we'd kick in, wake up and do it again, and this and that, until I realized ain't nobody bringing no groceries to this party. Right. Ain't nobody bringing no booze yeah. over a here. A few things might be missing the next and day. And nobody's really helping me clean this bitch up. That too. And this is really a lot of work. And so I shut all that down. Yeah. I shut all that down. I'm not home to entertain anyway. You might catch me on a, in, in, in the middle of transitioning from coming somewhere and getting ready to go somewhere. I might eat out at dinner or do something like that, but I don't do all that. You know, because then people start to expect it too. 
Yeah. And I used to cook big Christmas dinners mm -hmm. and Thanksgiving and have like 50, 60 people over and my daughter's friends and stuff. It was very expensive. It was a lot of work. And when and it's just like being a wife. I will cook for my husband whenever I can. But don't fucking have me. Don't, don't expect me to like what's for dinner. And I'm out here working my motherfucking ass off. And then you want me to play my little role. You know, I'll buy dinner. <laughs> right. Shit, but I, I don't expect me to do all that. It's just too much, and I, and with the, you know, you get scarier the older that that you get too. You know, that's as with, you should, with, as you with, should. With all this shit that's going on, I don't think that I live my life in a way that anybody would want to harm me. But jealousy is a motherfucker. Jealousy is a motherfucker. And what people yo. think you got, or what people think you're doing, they not doing will will it can blow up in your face. I, so. I've actually pinpointed people that I was cool with who later became someone I wasn't cool with. And we pinpointed the transition point after they came to my house. After they came to my house and saw then how I lived. They the fuck up. They saw how I lived. Something would happen afterwards that didn't make a lot of sense to me, and it's like, okay, you saw yeah. my house, and, and and there was a little bit of jealousy or or some sort of like something of because unless you're sharing, you know, like like Wyclef said, uh, if you ain't sharing, people ain't caring. Like unless you're sharing with people, and you can never share enough, right? Uh, they're going to feel when they go back to their home, and it's not as nice as yours, and so forth. They're going to feel a certain type of way, even if they if they're doing okay. I've seen this happen time and time again. Yeah. You know, People rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace, Pop Smoke, uh, who we don't know whether the situation came from him exposing his address or not, but this does seem like a probable situation at this point in yeah, time. It's an Airbnb. It's not it's, even your it's home. It's not even so. your home. It's not even your home. And there's, but, but you're balling out. You're showing all this designer clothes you got. You got a bunch of jewelry on. And then there's the house. And people are just so rotten sometimes. I wonder would people want to rob you if you showed yourself donating to Skid Row or the homeless or if you showed yourself doing other type of things with your money. Would people want to come and get you there? I think so. Because it's fucking jewelry. And you could, you you could, think so? Yeah, because they think, well, I, that money would be better spent on me. Oh. Yeah. People ain't shit. People ain't shit. <laughs> people ain't shit. People ain't shit. And let me tell you, I wish... I could go and start naming names of all the people I dealt with that ain't shit, but unfortunately I'll probably Me get too, sued for it. it. I can do it right here, <laughs> I can right, do it right now. Here. I can, I can go so through it in detail. Yeah. But unfortunately, and this is why <laughs> successful people, they're like, oh, you changed. Oh, you don't fuck with no one anymore. Yeah, because shit, I got sued by the last five people that I fuck with, and I got my shit stolen, and I got this, and I got that, and, and, and so forth. Like, you know... <laughs> And if you wreck my car, yeah. you can't fix a you motherfucking you, thing. All you can do is apologize. Say, I'm sorry. And walk away. And walk away. And now here I got $3,800 worth of bullshit. Because exactly. you done popped my tires and <laughs> fucked up my rims. <laughs> and one of these ignorant ass potholes in L.A. <laughs> this sounds like a real situation here. It's a situation. It's a situation. <laughs> Lunell, always a pleasure. Be on the lookout for more interviews that Lunell will be doing for Vlad TV. Yes, We're not going to name any names yet because right. they haven't been done yet. Right. But there's a few more in the works Yes, that I think that you guys will really be very much entertained once by. Once again, I said thank you for the opportunity. I never even saw that coming. Hey. So that's that's awesome. I've been interviewing people for years since I was back in Oakland. So. Yep, on Soul Beat. Yes, on Soul Beat Television yep. Network. So I appreciate the opportunity to do it here. And... um you know, you always get me wrapped up. But I think I did. I think I did. I, I think I'm okay. We'll I see. I think I'm okay. We're going to see. We'll see what happens. We're going to see. We're going to see. <laughs> Lunell, peace. Peace out.